John, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's my honor. This will be a lot of fun in this interview. Um, scaling is a big part of an organization as big as yours. Yes. Um, it is global market opportunities. I uh, wanted to learn from you, took over 20 years back. Mm -hmm. Scaling was one of the big issues. Yes. Uh, you handled really well, so just wanted you know, input on that. Well, if you think about it, we talked today about rather than thinking linear, think exponentially. And so as you think about scaling your organization, you want to play your moves not for the next 12 months, but think about what does it mean for 12 months, three years, and five years. And then be realistic as you scale. Make sure you don't scale so quickly you, that you continue to deliver profitability as you scale. And then do a combination of leaders, some who have been there and handled the large scale before, and some who are truly almost startup entrepreneurs, and it will help you challenge. And so the combination of those two is what allow you to scale well. The other element is innovation, mm -hmm. uh, organic and inorganic. Yes. Um, Big organizations have the challenge always. Do we create entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or do we go out and acquire some innovative sure. companies outside? It has been both for you. Yes. Uh, so some of the experiences. Well, you think about innovation, uh, and this is a tagline that we kind of invented for the Valley. Uh, it's build by partner. Build as you do it yourself. And there are two transitions on yourself. One is you do it, but you do it, innovate primarily in your product lines. Another, which is hard to do, is you innovate in new areas. And it's taken us almost 20 years to learn how to do that well. The second is you acquire. We've acquired 178 companies. But the issue is 90% of acquisitions in high tech fail. It's how do you different? And how do you have a selection process that aligns your vision, similar cultures, in a way that really makes a difference and you hold the people? And then I think for this next decade, strategic partnerships will play an entirely different role. So it's how well you do in these strategic partnerships as you move forward becomes key. And then realizing it's very difficult to do. So if you do it the same way everybody else does, you will fail too. So you've got to say kind of how you develop your rules that you stand by, your basic founding principles on those issues. I'm extending the analogy to people now. Okay. Uh, inspiri inspiring people, empowering people is important. Yes, it Creating is. leaders in your organization for the acquisition part of it and also for the innovation part of it. Yes. So empowering the leaders and inspiring them the right way is very important for a leader like you. Okay. Uh, your take on that. Oh, I completely agree. I think as a uh, CEO, you only have four jobs. Uh, vision and strategy for the company. Uh, the selection, development, recruitment, retention, and making the changes in the leadership team to implement that vision and strategy. The third is one that I didn't understand as well when I became CEO, but culture. You never have a good or great company without a strong culture. and We're different between it, but you've got to have a culture that matches the views of the company and the leader. And then the fourth element you do as a leader is communicate. So to your point, you outline the vision and then you inspire your team and communicate in a way that they follow you to that vision. Uh, with SDN and cloud mm -hmm. infrastructure, which is taking shape now, all the other market sources are opening up. So I see Cisco standing at the right uh, pivot point mm -hmm. to move forward. Um, you know, moving forward, how do you see that? Well, it, what's exciting is every one of the technologies you just mentioned, you know, network function virtualizations, uh, software-defined networks, uh, clouds, et cetera, are all network-centric. So we're at the core of every transition that's going on, and you could expand that to the social network, and you could expand it to digitization, et cetera. And we believe there'll be intelligence throughout on that. And so we come at it with architectures and balance, and then we plan to lead. We're the number one player in, in private clouds, as an example. Uh, we're now the number one player by far in network function virtualization. Uh, we got a little bit slow start in software-defined networks. Now we're the clear leader in software-defined networks. And so what we do is nobody wakes up in the morning saying, yeah, I want a software-defined network. What they want is programmability, the ability to make a difference, fast innovation, and fast IT we talked about earlier. So we not only provide the capabilities of these concepts, we provide the ability to do it at lower cost and through architectures that allow them to get the results they want, which is fast innovation, lower cost. You are among the few remaining legends of have run the company in more than 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. They're leaving behind a huge legacy. Uh, the important thing for the leader is uh, to see his legacy play forward. Uh, I wanted your take on that. Well, uh, this may surprise you. Uh, I, uh, I'm not a big believer in legacy. Uh, I, as an example, I've never been to a graduation, my own graduation, high school, college, 
uh, law school, uh, MBA school, I tend to always be looking forward. And I think that's important. It's much like our kids. Our legacy isn't our kids. All we want as parents is for our kids to have a chance to be happy in life, healthy, and to uh, fulfill their dreams and aspirations. So what I want at Cisco isn't about me or looking backwards. It's thinking forwards as a company on how we really differentiate ourselves and how this next generation of leaders do a better job than I did. Finally, uh, Silicon Valley is the bastion of entrepreneurship and technology innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, Cisco is pretty much everywhere around the globe. Um, what would you, you advise the emerging entrepreneurs in this space? Well, I think there are two equalizers in life, and that is education and the Internet. Uh, entrepreneurs, however, are how you take advantage of education and the Internet to re-achieve your goals. And the first advice would be understand this digitization concept that's coming at us isn't about technology. It's about it will transform every business, every government in the world. Secondly, think exponentially, not linearly on it. Third, it's about the same leadership principles that I talked about. It's about vision and strategy and what's your differentiation. It's about getting your leadership team around you that can help you implement that vision and strategy and having the courage to change when appropriate. Uh, it's about the culture that you want and it's about how you communicate all of the above. The other thing as a leader for the entrepreneurs, you've got to constantly reinvent yourself. Right. It used to be when I started, reinventing was maybe once every 10 years. Then it became every seven, then it became every five, now it's almost every three. And that's what I'm particularly proud of is how Cisco's managed through those transitions. All right, it's a pleasure. I'm wishing you all the best for the future. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. My honor. You have a great day. Cheers.